We begin the legacy category with Bill Barry, a man who made history both in and out of radio. Two things always fascinated Bill, even at an early age. Big band music. And each evening it's the music of the swing era. And tonight we're looking into the music of from the fall of 1940 into the spring of 1941. And the art of communications. Bill began playing musical instruments as a kid. As an 18-year-old in the Army, he was a radio operator in his tank battalion. The day before VE Day in Europe, Bill's tank brigade captured the birthplace of Adolf Hitler. After returning to civilian life in Middle Tennessee, Bill continued playing in live bands, but now he wanted to play for even bigger audiences. Soon he got his first broadcast license. As you probably know, Bill played a key part in launching quite a few radio stations and was also instrumental in several key engineering developments. In the early 60s, long before focus groups and audience research, Bill realized that radio was turning to the kids. And more importantly, he realized radio was turning away from adults. So Bill saw the target audience he wanted and he got them. Adults. Marvel, you're listening to WAMB, and here's the sweetest music. The ones who had money and weren't afraid to spend it. Adults, who quickly became a loyal audience for the ever-growing Barry Empire. Bill popularized what would become the music of your life format, and that's what his radio stations played until the day he died. And that music can still be heard today, in high definition, no less, on WMOT in Murfreesboro. He was a leader, he was an innovator, he was a pioneer, and the recipient of our very first Lifetime Achievement Award. And tonight, we welcome Bill Barry to the inner circle of the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame. Next up, it's Chicago native Lowell Blanchard. His first professional announcing job was at the 1933 World's Fair in Illinois. Even then, his reputation as a great communicator and an even sharper eye for talent were all ready to find. Then it was off to radio jobs in Indiana and Michigan before stopping in Iowa. It was there in the Hawkeye State that Blanchard further enhanced his eye for talent by hiring yet another great communicator future President Ronald Reagan. Of course, Reagan went on to great success in acting and in politics. Lowell went on to his own great success in broadcasting. He moved south to Tennessee's first radio station, WNOX, and it was there in Knoxville Blanchard found his permanent broadcast home. He was given this order, do whatever it takes to make WNOX a success in country music. And he knocked it out of the park. His early programs helped launch the careers of Roy Acuff, Kitty Wells, Grandpa Jones, and many, many others. Blanchard has been called a forgotten father of country music, but his contributions to East Tennessee went far beyond radio. He served two terms on the Knoxville City Council, was chairman of the Easter Seal Society, the March of Dimes, and a host of other charities. He also served as the public address announcer for the Tennessee Vols, alongside our first year inductee, John Ward. Blanchard may have been a forgotten father of country music, but country musicians and East Tennesseans by the thousands never forgot him. And we remain in East Tennessee to bring you the truly remarkable story of Bobby Dutton. Good evening, race fans. Here's your starting lineup time at Ashway Speedway. Coming back out of turn number four. They're running side by side, bumper to bumper, door to door. One night the drag racers, the guy didn't show up. It was to announce. And they said, Bobby, get up there and do it. You like to talk. So I got up and started announcing drag races. And the next week they asked me to come back and do it again. Very few careers are as symbolic with one station in one market as that of Bobby Denton. As a young man, he got the broadcasting bug and was hired in 1961 for afternoons at WIVK. And for almost 40 years, he well, never left. ready to watch me cry mercy. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome in the Bobby Denton program on a brand new time on WIVK. FM. Eventually, Bobby worked his way up to vice president and general manager. 
and was actively involved in the station until his death. Over the decades, Bobby broke the records and helped make the careers of some of the biggest names in country music. And let's face it, they don't come any bigger than Dolly Parton. Bobby Blackie Denton, king of the radio. He started out as a rock jock in Tennessee. He was wild as a buck, but cute as a bee. He moved down to Florida from the country. He crawled back to Wivick on his bended knees. Bobby Blackie Denton, king of the slick back hair. His very impressive WIVK accomplishments aside, Bobby originated the five most famous words in college football. It's football time in Tennessee. Yep, that was Bobby, who was also the public address announcer for the UT Vols for an amazing 48 years the longest PA announcer in all of sports history. See, here's the thing about Bobby Denton. He wasn't just a radio guy, and he wasn't just a sports guy. In our world, he was a true rock star. Well, almost. You see, rock stars tend to come and go, but the contributions, the careers, and the memories Bobby Denton made will truly last forever. This very special lady is our next inductee, and it's Jill Green. Jill was a second-generation broadcaster who began her career back in the mid-60s at WKDA. It was there she learned the broadcast business from the ground up. But for Jill, working for just one station wasn't enough. She wanted to help them all. So in 1976, Jill went to the Tennessee Association of Broadcasters, and her love and knowledge of the industry went statewide. Jill was a driving force as well as a public voice for the TAB, and her knowledge and caring spirit earned her the trust, loyalty, and dedication of broadcasters everywhere. From the smallest member to the biggest corporate staff, Jill always and equally had their backs. And she always understood that broadcasting's best asset wasn't a fancy office or the most up-to-date studios. Jill always knew the biggest asset was the people. In 2011, Jill received the TAB's highest honor, the Distinguished Service Award. Tonight, she receives our highest honor, membership into the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame. Up next, John McDonald, the man Broadcasting Magazine has called America's best known farm director. We've all heard the kiddie song, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Well, our old MacDonald literally had thousands. MacDonald's knowledge of agriculture and audiences, combined with WSM's 50,000 watt signal, had farmers in seven states depending on John for exactly what they needed. And they would come in from their fields, eat lunch at noon, and hear him on the radio. And you don't have people that often anymore. He knew what they wanted to hear, and he told them. And we may not have gotten it, but that audience sure did. From the early morning farm report on the waking crew to the noontime neighbor show, John McDonald became as much a part of Middle Tennessee as the rolling hills and the walking horses. The name Nat D. Williams is synonymous with Memphis. Born and raised on Beale Street, Nat left just long enough to earn his bachelor's and master degrees. He then returned to his native Memphis and spent the rest of his life trying to improve his people and his hometown. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, my friend. WTIA invites you to join us and help us to satisfy that hankering to offer you the best in radio entertainment and service to the finest people in the world. Matt I'll became listen. the first full-time black disc jockey in Memphis, but Williams was much more than a radio man. For over 40 years, he was a newspaper columnist. He also taught Sunday school and sang in his church choir, never missing a session in over 40 years. Longevity was a hallmark of his career. 
From his first sign-on at WDIA until he suffered a stroke in 1972, he never missed a shift. In between writing, singing, and jockeying, he was also a full-time school teacher. And if all that wasn't enough, he was also an MC at the Memphis Palace Theater. In fact, nearly all the major music talent that came out of Memphis was introduced, nurtured, and supported by Nat D at the Palace Theater. With his extraordinary talent, intellect, and energy, Nat D served as a lasting voice from Memphis to the Mississippi Delta.